The uncertainty of the Fed seems to have moved away. Uh, they, you know, they were responsible for about a half of the losses in December, if you look from what happened from December 19th through Christmas. So now we have the sense that they're going to be more accommodative, and that's very positive for sort of certainty. Does that Not, mean you should stay in, in bonds? Should you hold all these? You, you, the yields yes. are so low. Well, you say the yields are so low, but you know, Rick makes the good point, which is that comparatively, rates in the United States are, are very attractive. Also, we're not just talking about U.S. bond rates, but you know, investment-grade corporate rates, emerging market dollar, non-dollar rates. Um, you know, these are all attractive areas, and if you want to build a portfolio that yields four or four and a half percent today, as a lot of our clients right, do, but, you can. And I, I know you guys can kind of put it together the right way, but for a lot of people who are at home with more plain vanilla options, they're just looking at the 401ks and thinking, well, how much of this should be in stocks versus bonds? Do, do we need to be scared of bonds here or no? Because if the economy is still going strong, we just talked about three percent wage gains. And you're suggesting that people have no reason to be scared about their fixed income investments. Not particularly scared. That, that, is, actually, that is actually our view. I mean, we think that the maximum peak rates could be on the 10-year is between 3 and 3 and a quarter, so okay. definitely higher than where we are. But it's a, it's, you can get much better yields by moving out and a little bit on the risk spectrum and, and, and that. This is very bullish for equities. Okay. And we just added today, a uh, matter of fact, an exposure to Asian equities, okay. which have been down 16% over the course of the last 12 months. And we want to see our clients really move their portfolios into emerging markets now. Let me bring in Bob Pisani here, Bob, because now with the Fed having set this up for, I mean, you could argue the rest of the year unless the data really starts to jump, that means for the market's attention, it turns to earnings, doesn't it? Yeah, I, the problem I've got right now is there's a little too much happy talk priced in. So look what was being discussed here. Fed's going to be dovish all year, markets believe. There's going to be a positive outlook on the trade talks. And what about the global economic slowdown? Well, all right, there's a global economic slowdown, but the comments from the companies are not that bad. Maybe it's manageable. And how about the earnings? Well, yeah, okay, the earnings are declining. They're lower, but they're still probably going to be positive. So on this, we're at, we've regained all the losses in December. We're at 2,700. A lot of full year 2019 estimates are, tw are at 27 or 2,800. 16 times forward earnings? That sounds like a nice number if you have 10% earnings growth. But we're talking about 0 to 5% earnings growth. You see what I yeah. mean, Kelly? Yeah, I it, there's a lot of happy talk in here. There is, Rick. So final comment before we go then. David just mentioned he thinks the 10-year yield could still go up to 3 or 3 and a quarter percent. Is the market anywhere near that anymore, or has it completely thrown in the towel? You know, I, I think that... I would look at rates as an added bonus. They may continue to fall a little bit, but the next sizable move is going to be to the upside in rates. That doesn't mean it can't melt for a while. And Bob, I'm not sure if it's happy talk. I actually think it's quite realistic talk. The Fed has moved its rate from basically 0.25 to 2.25 to 2.50. Europe still has a deposit rate of minus 40 basis points. Wow. I think it's very realistic talk. And I think that's exactly what we need at this point. Listen, we could slide into a recession. I'd rather have the Fed more realistic. Dovish would be if they were talking about an ease.